616 in Trinidad and uh, Tobago. Good to have you with us on uh, this uh, Monday morning. Well, on this International Women's Day, there's certainly a lot to discuss. And we begin with the United Nations Regional Coordinator, Marina Valta. Uh, in International Women's Day, very much uh, part of our conversation with all of the issues uh, on the table. And uh, I remember the, the last time I interviewed, I said Miss Walter, which is the English way. Of course, the German pronunciation is Valta. Exactly. Uh, good, good of you to be with us. Uh, this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Good to be back. And I have to say, I was desperately hoping that you were related to Fritz Walter, <laughs> uh, the captain of the West German team that won the World Cup Absolutely. in 1954. But you were telling me that there's no relation. Unfortunately not. My father would have given everything to be related to Fritz Walter, but we're not, unfortunately. All right. Well, but, but still, you have an important role uh, to perform. Give us your perspective. Uh, you would have spent enough time in Trinidad and Tobago right. to be aware of these issues and the challenges about uh, women and safety of women and gender rights and so on. There's going to be a lot of activism and there's going to be a, a protest action taking place this afternoon as well. From your perspective as a, a United Nations coordinator uh, and someone based here in Port of Spain, what significance do you place on International Women's Day? Um, no, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's, it's sure. great to be back. Um, look, International Women's Day is, is an important marker for us once a year to also celebrate the achievements. So it's both, right? We want to look back at uh, the fact that women have, have come a long way. You know, when you look at the political participation, the fact that they have a role at the table. And it's very funny, this morning on the way to the studio, I got a little WhatsApp from my aunt. She's 86 years old, back in Germany. And she congratul congratulated me to International Women's Day. It's a, it's a day where women at all levels, at all ranks, really celebrate and, and want to see where have we, you know, come to. Um, it is also a day that we use as a marker to say, look, we need to accelerate it. And uh, in a country like Trinidad and Tobago, where you have, you know, role models, you have a, the, the president is female, you, you know, you have obvious signs that women have come far. You still also have a lot of work to do, especially in this cold, you know, post COVID times that have pushed back some of the achievements, I have to say. And let, let's talk about that a bit, uh, uh, because it, it's always a, a balancing act as a diplomat like yourself when you were talking about domestic issues. But let, let, let's talk about this, because certainly it's been highlighted. We, we can't get away from it. The reality of women and girls being victims of violence right. and issues of gender-based violence, which even our, our, our police authorities have recognized by the development of a gender-based violence unit, right. which was inaugurated last year. Uh, what are your concerns? that area? Look, I mean, um, unfortunately, what we've seen also happening through COVID-19, it was the great amplifier, right? So if, if a country like Trinidad and Tobago was already struggling with the issue of gender-based violence, it, it just got a little worse, if not a lot worse, during those lockdown times, right? Where the, the, the victims of gender-based violence are now, in fact, stuck, stuck back at home. I mean, we do see the government, we do see the institutions really trying to make a dent, but it's, it's a tough one because it's, you know, it's not just a question of implementation of police force. It's, it goes through several sectors, through education, through, you know, the way we deal with violence at home. It starts in the family. And um, while there are many analysts that pointed to, you know, the history, migration patterns, to to what, as, as to why, not just in Trinidad and Tobago, but in the region, gender-based violence is, is a massive issue in every day's you know, life of women. The question is, how do you move forward? And uh, one of the things we, we did at the United Nations uh, about roughly, roughly eight months ago, we started a, an initiative with the government, but with civil society together. It's the Spotlight Initiative with the funding of the European Union, so really partnering with our friends at the European Union to try to make a dent, help strengthening institutions, help work with civil society to be there with victims. Um, you have to realize that gender-based violence is something that goes, unfortunately, through society. And it will probably take a generation to you know, address it. It's nothing that you will change overnight because it starts in the nucleus of the family. If I always say, if I have a son and a daughter, right? So my responsibility as a mother is also to teach my son that using violence is not an option. Using violence is not how you resolve a problem. And so to really be able to fight gender-based violence here in the country, you have 
to have everyone at the table, from the mother, from the citizen, to the public and the government and, and the civil society actors. And, and you're right, it's, it's not something that's going to change overnight. If yeah. you're talking about attitudes, and, and it, it might take a generation, right. but uh, of course, as, as you would be well aware, the, the women who are on the front line can't wait a generation. So right. how do you deal with that? Because you're trying to, to re-engineer people's thinking and attitudes uh, from, from the very beginning. At the same time, you're trying to provide support, you're trying to provide uh, services, whether uh, via government agencies or NGOs mm -hmm. or voluntary organizations. Uh, you, you're also trying to ensure that, that you can you can prevent these attacks from happening so so how do you deal with that uh, at, at, at so many different levels when funding might be an issue when there might be a shortage of resources how do you prioritize uh, a situation like a challenge like this well basically in a way the how you already described it you have to you know, attack it, you have to tackle it at all the different sectors in parallel, right? You can't rely on just police enforcement because they can't swing it alone. You have to start working at the, at the school level with the curricula of the schools. You have to work with family institutions. So you have to, the, the, the ability to even make a dent starts with the realization you have to work in parallel in different areas of society. And, and that's what we're trying to do. And, and coming back to your point, it doesn't always necessarily take money. Some aspects, yes, you know, to start a shelter, to run a shelter, that's a money of infrastructure, that's a question of infrastructure and money. But to change the attitudes in the families where, you know, the families used to be the nucleus of being taught how to live peacefully together, but it has reversed a little bit. But that is attitude. It doesn't even take much money. It takes the realization of parents and citizens. What do I teach my children? How do I raise my sons to be a citizen, to be, you know, someone that doesn't, you know, endorse violence against women? So I think it's a mix. And what you're trying to do is you work with all actors across civil society and the government in parallel at the same time. And I think that's your biggest chance to actually you know, impact on a society altogether, which is a, it's a big task. And, and you, you mentioned the fact that Trinidad and Tobago would have made huge strides over the years. In fact, uh, uh, has, would have moved a lot faster compared to some of the so-called first world nations. A, a woman prime minister in Kamala Prasad Bisesa. Barbados has a woman prime minister right exactly. now in, in Mia Motley. Uh, and of course, your, your home country, uh, uh, Germany, uh, Angela Merkel right. uh, has been the leader for, uh, through a very difficult period right. and is, is being hailed as one of the, the, the visionary leaders right. uh, of modern times. But yet still, you have this stereotype of women mm -hmm. uh, and the way they are portrayed in, in, in popular culture, in media, in entertainment mm -hmm. circles and so on. Mm -hmm. do, do, does that trouble you? Uh, whether we're talking about a Trinidad and Tobago context right. or a global context, that, that for all the, the advances that you see, women are still, because it's commercially viable, to be portrayed in a certain way. Look, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I think, as a mother of a daughter and a son, of course, it does trouble me to a certain extent. But at the same time, you know, the progress that was made really is very hopeful. You know, if, if you look at the, the achievements that were made in many countries, not in all, um, Trinidad Tobago, very important point, maternal mortality, right, maternal health. So over the years, you saw a distinctive shift of giving, paying more attention to women. The, the you know, maternal mortality in Trinidad Tobago is almost close to zero percent. It's massive. You know, the ability to know that you can give birth and you're not going to die is, is quite important. Legislative rights, um, political participation. So there is a lot to celebrate. Women nowadays have a choice. They can have a family and they can work. They are at the table. But I think it's also a little bit of a numbers game because if you look at, you know, the participation, we're still not there. There's still a lot to be done. Um, women don't participate in the same numbers. If you look at... Um, the number of CEOs or, or the, the numbers in, in, in politics of how many women are there, they're still not quite yet there. And then if you go in the lower ranks, despite the many role models, um, you know, women in the same job often do not earn the same wage as men. And very often they are predominantly found in sectors that, for example, now through COVID-19, were the, the predominant sectors that the took the hit, right? In the Caribbean in particular, tourism, hospitalities were, so to say, the sectors that forced, they were forced to shut down. And so suddenly through this COVID-19 pandemic, 
we are unfortunately wit witnessing a regression of gender equality because the unemployment figures these days are much higher with women than with men. So I think it's, it's so to say, it's a constant struggle and it's a constant task for all of us to make sure that in the long run, we are talking equality in numbers, in participation, and in rights. And it's good that you, you point out the, the successes and the achievements, the, the, the reduction of the, 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 the mortality rate uh, <laughs> to almost zero uh, for women giving birth is very significant. Yeah. But, but of course, unfortunately, bad news sells. Yeah. And, and, and when you have the tragedies, as would have occurred, right. and we, we've highlighted them about the young woman being killed, Ashanti Riley, at the end of November, Andrea Barrett in January, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the, the, the outrage that is expressed, that, that tends to dominate right. the, the, the situation. How do you, how do you re respond to that? Because uh, many will be pointing out, yes, I hear what you're saying about these achievements and, and these gains and, and moving in the re right direction, even though COVID-19 has presented some further challenges. But still, women, too many young women, are living in fear right. in, in a small space like Trinidad and Tobago. Right. No, I mean, I think the, the response is a very clear one, and you, you, you've also covered it very well. Uh, it's, it's simply not acceptable, and I think it, it takes the sort of, it calls for the sort of political leadership to really bring everyone together around the table, right? I mean, sometimes I wonder even to, you know, whether, whether it's time to call for a, a round table, and not just as a discussion club, but really to call in the various actors as it touches not just on security, it touches on education, it touches on so many so many uh, if you allow me to do, do we really want to go towards another meeting, another conference, another, because, uh, forgive me for sounding cynical, no, 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 it's good. but I often wonder if, if you know, all, all of these meetings yeah. and all of these conferences achieve anything, or, or should people just take drastic action? Like, but it's, it's, uh, when I say drastic action, protest action, uh, walking out and, and to highlight issues, because uh, are these meetings and these conferences really, really as, as productive as they should be? Look, obviously it's the word I'm coming from, so I can only say that <laughs> I think that there's a certain uh, sense that it makes protest action, the participation of women, of people in the street is very important because it shows the line, right? It, it sets the background. So, you know, that's the, that's the movement in I, I came from. And it's very important that citizens express their priorities. But the sort of conference is bringing people together is key because one sector alone, especially when it comes to gender-based violence, cannot tackle that. And I think that's the, that's the, if you try to silo the approach, you know, you only talk, you know, security forces, you only talk education, you miss the connection points. Um, the health sector, you know, one of the most important first points of arrival for victims in these countries are the health centers in the districts. So who's talking to the doctors in terms of what do they do with victims? Is there a protocol? Can the protocol be observed? And unless you connect all those dots, you won't be able to make impact. And that's why the sort of conferences, the round tables are important to bring people together, but also to set clear markers. Where do we want to be as a country in a year from now? And then to, to, you know, n to not drop the ball. I have the impression, I've been here for two years. There are always, including the media, I'm afraid, yeah, there course. are already certain waves of attention where a, a, a very tragic- You call it a nine day wonder around here. The tragic case is, br is brought to the attention and forward, but then people move on because, you know, the new cycle, of course, has to follow whatever else is out there. Same happens in politics, same happens with many of us. And the catch-22 is how do you overcome that? How do you bring continuity to really dealing with the topic and not just dropping it every few weeks? And I think once you find the key to that, success might be easier to achieve than, you know, dealing with it in pockets of, what did you say, the 90 days wonder? 90, yeah. 90 wonder. 90 I wonder. wish it were 90 days. But it's only nine it's days, 90 even days. shorter. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, uh, I take your point about the importance of coming together right. and meeting and discussing. But as far as implementation, right. and, and, and implementation when the nine day period has come to an end, when it's, it's gone off the front pages, when it's gone off the news right. headlines, 
we, we seem to have an issue and a challenge as far as implementation. It's all well and good to talk right. and come up with your recommendations, <coughs> but what about the implementation of these things? Look, I mean, one of the implementation is always the uh, the, the big um, the big uh, challenge, and I think it's going to get even more challenging in times where you know you through COVID nineteen you have a socioeconomic downturn that challenges not only this country, the whole globe. So how do you pay attention to a topic that needs urgent attention? In a way also, what we are proposing, you know, move closer to the civil society partners. We have an incredible strong civil society here in this country, and they know exactly what's going on. They're at the community level, they're running the shelters, they're supporting the victims. And by moving closer and keeping them at your side as, so to say, the watchdog pointing out on a continuous basis, we're missing something here, there's a gap. You probably, uh, you know, you have a better chance to actually have impact because you stay the course. One of the issues that, that often comes up when we're talking about women's issues is public pressure, in right. the, public, uh, the, the weight of expectation in, in an almost superficial way. Because I was in, across in Tobago, we right. were doing a show from Tobago for a, a few days last week mm -hmm. and speaking to a couple of female politicians. Mm -hmm. and, and one of them pointed out that it's always an issue how I style my hair, my, 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 my dress, whether it matches my nails, right. if, it, if it's properly coordinated. But you never hear that about men. You never hear that about a, a man where, or like me wearing a shirt that is about two sizes too large <laughs> or, 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 or not, not, not combing my hair properly. It's never an issue. But for a woman, it, apart from whatever merit she brings to the table right. and whatever substantive issues that are to be discussed, it almost always seems to, whether it's the media promoting right. it or other people, uh, wh whether you're dressed properly and so on, isn't that a classic example of, a, of, an, of an arcane, archaic attitude mm -hmm. that just doesn't seem to want to go away? No, no, it's very true, even though um, I have to say, if, if you know, you were to talk to my husband, he would equally complain about the fact that if he doesn't show up in a suit and a tie, I mean, there are stereotypes on both sides, I have to admit, you know. But not to the and extent of what that Not to the extent. Um, I do think there's improvement, uh, and I think it's also a little bit cultural. It has, it has changed in, in, you know, many... Uh, in, in many countries, but it's still very strong. It amazes me how strong it is. But that's where I think I call also, you know, upon women to, to maybe do a little bit less, to glamify ourselves a little bit less, and, and to to try to fight the stereotypes. But they're very strong because it unfortunately also goes a lot back to you know the media pressure because certain pictures are being uh, co being compared. And and I do realize that a lot of the female politicians find it very hard because they get indeed hit with comments on their appearance way more than men. It's something that I think will uh, change and uh, improve over time because you've seen in, in, in many countries where there's a little bit less quantitation on that. But it's something that is e extremely strong, yeah, the, the societal stereotypes, but that's for you and me, for everyone to question ourselves. You know, how do we stick to that? What do we tell our children? Do I tell my daughter that she needs to appear in a certain way or do, do I give her the freedom to be herself more than a, a stereotype well, I, of I society. Well, I have two daughters. Well, they're not girls anymore. They're grown women. They tell me what to do. I don't tell them what, they tell them <laughs> very, what to do. So. Very healthy. So, yeah, I, I am outnumbered in my, in my own household. In <laughs> Good that to hear. We just have a couple of minutes left. Uh, sure, sure. And we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us this morning. What is your message uh, to, to, to Trinidad Tobago at a time, mm -hmm. again, when in the almost immediate aftermath of tragic events and so on, and still concerns about just as a simple issue of physical safety, but in the same way that you've highlighted the gains and the successes over time. What is your message to Trudan Tobago today? Look, I think uh, um, I'm always an internal positivist. Uh, the country has come a long way, and, and, and that goes for gender, for women's participation, uh, for women's equality in general. But in a moment uh, like this, where, where the country is you know, hurting yet again, you know, bleeding because this topic does not go away, um, my, my hope is that once you're over the pain, and you know, it's hard to fathom the, the pain of a family that again lost a daughter. Once you're over the pain, try to channel it into uh, the very constructive energy to move the country forward. And so with the help of the civil society partners, the help of families, the help of educators, teachers, try to focus and be very precise when talking to your to your electorate when talking to your politicians, to your leadership, 
what it is you want for this country and what future you want for your daughters in five, in 10, in 20 years from now and stay at it, stick with it, no matter what other topic takes over the daily news. Be a continuous force of, of a constructive voice of this is what I want for my daughters in this country for the future. Ms. Valta, thank you very much for taking the thank time uh, to be with us uh, this morning. Indeed, a lot of issues to discuss when we talk about uh, women's rights and issues and, and the challenges faced by, by women in Trinidad and Tobago and girls, even with all the gains that would have been made. And uh, indeed, uh, today, a, a day to highlight uh, those many different challenges and uh, uh, try to, 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 to learn and progress uh, and move forward. Well, uh, as we go to the break, here's a rainbow captured at uh, Skinner Park by a viewer uh, and, uh, because of there's uh, quite a bit of rain on the way there and now a bougainvillea image uh, sent from a resident in uh, Lekoto or Lekito as it's pronounced in Tobago. It might be Lekoto which is the official French pronunciation but Tobago like Trinidad has its own uh, lingo as well. So it's Lekito bougainvillea for you at 637. We'll be right back. Yeah.